Lynn Wolfshifter. Or he plays one. He plays one on TV anyway. Chris Holden Marie. Ask him anything. Yeah. The square root of pi. Go ahead. <laughs> he had eight, eight hours hour sleep. Yes, they, they don't want to. Nothing that's quiz worthy, probably. My first question is that in the. Oh, oh okay, he's taking pictures on. <laughs> you gotta get the important stuff out of the way first. And uh, Chris, in the inter in the first season DVD, in your interview, you said that the the emotional scenes were kind of your favorites to play. Is that still true? And for the other two of you, what are your favorite types of scenes to play? Well, that was the first season, so... Right, exactly. I was still a good actor back then. <laughs> I could commit to an emotional scene. Uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> you know what? The emotional scenes are the biggest challenge. You know, it's like when you mix... But what I love about Lost Girls, you get to mix the physical, the, the supernatural with the emotional. And that, that's an awesome challenge as an actor. I mean, like, you know, if, when, when you get to react to a tree that's a tree, it's okay. But when you get to react to an X that's a flying dragon uh, yeah. putting fire in your face and ripping your heart out at the same time because you're in love with the elf that's locked to a tree. And what he means by that is... A demonstration. Perfect. He's not doing the worm behind the desk this time, don't worry. I told you, the most left field man I know on planet Earth. That's <laughs> dragon. Yeah. This is it. Ready? Casey, did you used to be a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> but we all do it always together. <laughs> okay, here we go. Get the cameras out. <laughs> You know what, guys? You should have gone to drama school. You would have been brilliant. <laughs> how many years? And, and I have one of the years of theater school for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had my professional. <laughs> it's as easy as that, guys. Honestly, I don't want to come out and do it. <laughs> we'll just leave that up there for the rest of the panel, just to remind everybody. Paul, what about you? Uh, you know, once again, I need you to repeat the question. <laughs> 
I was in a world of my own. You know what, I'll go. That's quite alright, you were distracted by dragons, so... I was trying to work out the question through his answer, but I couldn't do it. What are your favourite types of scenes to play on the show? All oh, my favourite types yes. of scenes? Um, I, don't, I like all the scenes I get to play as Vex, they're always just so much fun. Like, I honestly don't think I get a dud scene a lot of the I think time. they want something better than that. <laughs> oh, oh, that was so bad. Like all scenes. Come on. Vex. Okay, it's, I, I, I like everything. I'm just a nice guy. <laughs> I like wearing the leather thong. <laughs> I like getting whipped. <laughs> Is that what you are? Sexy in a cod piece. <laughs> I love nearing my body in the shower, preparing for my scene. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why women do that to themselves. It is horrific. It's just one of the things he learned in Lambda. And I'm sorry I said Radha yesterday, but no, it was Lambda. Yeah, it was the London Academy. We take turns. Professional British act of repairs using nair. <laughs> We take turns spoiling them down. That's the only oh, way to get super smooth. <laughs> I'm not even going to comment on this. <laughs> Nair and genitalia. No comment. I don't think it's proper. Yeah. It, it does get morning, dicey. Everybody. Uh, morning! <laughs> Who here nairs their genitalia? Yeah. Wait, actually, don't raise your hand because I don't think we really want to know. No, really, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Do chemicals in those parts go together, or is it like totally not appropriate? Uh, I don't know. Will it fall off? Casey would have been... near my private parts. Good to know. I was just okay. going to put acid on my private parts. Hey, yeah. so I'm just asking how a professional actor prepared as my girl. I hope, I hope no one ate this morning. Unless it's coming up right now. Oh, Chuck. Um, I enjoy the emotional scenes. I don't get it. Oh my god, we're still on this question. <laughs> One, two, three. It's my turn. <laughs> wow, we'll let you go first tomorrow, okay? I enjoy the emotional scenes. I, I don't get many uh, on Lost Girl, but I enjoy them. That's my favorite. Okay, next question. <laughs> they okay, look like they're ready for me to move on. So. I, I do have another, uh, actually, uh, another question for you. Were any of you fans of either uh, of genre television movies or, you know, fantasy, science fiction books prior to getting a role on the show, or is this something you've grown into? <laughs> that's, that's why, that's, yeah, that's, that's why I asked you your first. But no, ask them first. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, yeah, he's the World of okay. Warcraft nerd right here. Yeah. Um, no, actually I wasn't, to be honest. Um, I, I just didn't know about the world. And, um, but shit, now? <laughs> I love the world. I love it now. Um, unfortunately, I don't have too much time to be gaming, which is a, a shame. But, um, I definitely am a fan of sci-fi now. And there's just so, I feel like we're just, there's so much out there. You know, it's, it's so accessible now. And uh, maybe that's just because I'm aware, and I wasn't aware before, but um, I love it. I love it. And I love what you guys do when we come out here. I like the costumes and everything. It's just incredible. So much balls. Way more balls than me. I, I'm a, please. That's his thing. And he's half centaur, as you'll remember. <laughs> Those are some big balls that y'all got. <laughs> Centaurs. Uh, Myself, I, I, yeah, I was actually. Um, I used to watch a lot of programs with my grandfather when I was quite young and he would sit me down and he was just into everything. His, his particular thing was sort of sci-fi horror, that sort of the, the cross in the genres there that would happen. Um, so I, I got exposed to everything and I, I've always been a fan of everything. Um, you know, I was a fan of all the Star Wars, all the Star Treks, you know. Um, the, the originals, not so much the next generation. I never got into the next gen, it's the older versions. I Patrick Stewart, come on! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, was, uh, I was a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor Who, of course. <laughs> Doctor Who, oh, of course, Doctor Who. Yeah, nice to watch Doctor Who. Yeah. And then Benny Hill. Yeah. Benny Hill! Benny Hill. Damn it, Benny Hill. Are you 
you're gonna run around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should worry about that. Chased by. <laughs> that, that, yeah, exactly. That's Casey's ideal death, being chased by a marathon race of like half naked women with helmets on. Don't give anybody ideas here, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, and me, yeah, I have to. Go for it, nerd. No, no, no. But now I have to downplay it, because uh, I don't want to make you guys look like not nerds. Um, yeah, grew up reading, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, the Dragonlance was like sort of my first literature after I became literate. I dived straight into the world of elves and mages and all that kind of stuff, Raceland and Carmen. And, um, yeah, you know, and it's just persisted, you know, like, I do play World of Warcraft, it's true. Uh, Order Alliance! A horde. Um, I'm into my monk right now. I play him both, Mistweaver and Windwalker. Um, <laughs> I know I throw myself over bridge. <laughs> Honestly, like this is such an amazing genre. Uh, I think that like Star Trek, um, Star Wars, they, they help push the boundaries of our imagination. And in our imagination and our thought is where the evolution of our species lies. And I think that that's something wonderful that we can embrace also. So I'm gonna nerd out about myself right now. And it's it, it's it's, a, it's an amazing it's an amazingly inclusive genre, um, and, and I think we're able to uh, the, uh, people anyway. The writers are really getting on to this, and some of the, the shows that are coming out in this genre are telling like really intricate, complicated, inclusive, progressive stories. And I think that's the best thing that this genre is starting to offer people, um, which it maybe didn't as much before. But I think the writers. Bullshit! Should... You just didn't watch it. <laughs> Clearly, too busy watching Benny Hill with bouncing boobies. <laughs> Which, you know, I did too. First, I watched Star Trek. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, lost boys. Do we have some people with, that are with our mic people for questions out here? Okay. Does anybody, is anybody conscious? They're really? Right or are you just right reacting to our <laughs> foolishness? Yes, line up if you have questions. For, this, for these gentlemen this morning, please line up over here with either Erica or Sheila. If you it's Sunday matters. morning, line up. Because we want, you need to be at the mic because everybody needs to hear what you're saying. And just, if you, have, if you want to ask a question, go back there, please. Okay, we'll start over here with Erica, please. Hopefully mine will be hilarious, too, so that'll wake some people up. Uh, my question is, what is the best pickup line you've ever heard or told somebody in the worst? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> I only heard the first part of the question. What was the second? My God, they're playing deaf again. Best and worst pickup line. Okay, well, the, 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 I actually heard this from Ksenia. Uh, if you were a booger, I would pick you first. <laughs> yeah, that's hot. Yeah. What? But would she eat you? That was the worst. I've ever heard was, um, but it has to be the situation has to be right. So you, okay, so you're driving, and well, you, I guess you could be walking, and you pull up beside someone, and um, you, so, so, I hope this comes out right too. Um, uh, so, and, so everything. So, so okay, we get a demonstration. Remember, Casey was a teacher. Okay. Uh, what are you up to? <laughs> so that's what you asked me. So, right, oh, so okay. ask me. sorry, my bad. Are you the girl or are you the guy? So, uh, where are you headed today? 
You going home? Are you saying you want me to give you head? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, finish! So, uh, anyway, it goes like this. So, uh, are you going home? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going home. What a coincidence. I'm going the same place. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And he's going to her house. He's okay, not single. That's all. Awesome. That's the best I've heard. Over here we have somebody with Sheila. Go ahead. Show oriented. Uh, in yesterday's excellent panel, you guys were talking about how the writers. No beer served in Atlanta until 1230. What? No beer. What kind of city is this? Bang the audience with a smiley face. Does anybody have any alcohol? Come on, where are the hip flasks? Bring them up. <laughs> nice, good on you guys. Yeah, it's only 40 minutes away, so, you know, it'll probably be all right. That means after the panel, yeah, go for it. Uh, all right. Okay, um, well, well, let's have our question again. Yeah, yeah, well, We got distracted by the excitement about it. This time, really, we didn't. <laughs> okay, uh, in yesterday's panel, you talked about how the writers and producers give you a lot of creative input on your characters. Um, this question's from Casey. Where do you see your relationship and how you manage your relationship with Kenzie, your character's relationship with Kenzie? Um, honestly... <laughs> Without any spoilers, of course, I'm just what I'm on, so I see the wheels turning, right? But, um, you know, look, I mean, obviously the relationship with Kenzie is excellent in its uh, state of friendship. It's incredible, um, and I know a lot of people are asking, oh, are they going to get together type of thing? Maybe we'll do like a Wonder Years and get married in season eight or something. <laughs> but, but, um, <laughs> and then she can have an affair with Vax. Oh, that's right. great. <laughs> that's, that's Her dirty little bit on the side. <laughs> I'll have you mesmer yourself. Tear it right off. Anyway, uh -oh. Uh -oh. I meant... Yes, so, um, you know, uh, like, personally, I would love to see Hale and Kenzie get together. That's, you know, that's my personal uh, feeling. But um, I don't really know what the producers are going to do. They're kind of, kind of leaving it in the air right now and um, just, you know, seeing what happens. Uh, so, I mean, that's the best way I can answer your question, is on a personal level. I would love to see that. Um, I think it's kind of overdue. That's how I feel. Um, but I don't know exactly what's going to happen. It seems, I mean, we seem to always be kind of throwing a monkey wrench, right? Every time we feel like we're getting close and then something happens and, you know, so I just honestly stay tuned because I don't even know what the hell's going to happen. <laughs> it might just be a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over on this side. Hi, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, this question is for uh, Mr. Holden Reed. In, uh, in the show, you play a sexy werewolf that frequently takes his shirt off. Then in uh, Underworld, you played a sexy werewolf that frequently took his shirt off. Are you, are you concerned about being typecast? And is that necessarily a bad thing? They've got to have the shirt off now. <laughs> this is how my day always starts. It was awkward at first, but I got used to it, and now I really miss it. And, and to Chris, I can't act without it now. And, and to Chris's credit, he did not even jump when he poured that cold water on his back. I'm really impressed. It's the closest I had to it every day. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Yes, I am concerned about it, and I will no longer do a werewolf after Lost Girl. So, thank you all for watching, and I hope it was good and enjoyable, and I will never take my shirt off again after this moment. Because I'm getting fat and old. Stop making me get, keep like, 5% fat content, okay? It's a pain in the ass. I want to eat bacon, goddammit. Okay, I'm going to it, I mean. 
Hi, this question is for uh, Casey and Chris, but especially for Chris. Uh, my favorite episode is Original Sin. that CN. especially for me. Especially. <laughs> my favorite episode is Where's Original Where's my question? <laughs> Tell us I mean, just you give me a little bit. Throw me a bone, man. <laughs> well, you can throw your input out on it, too. My favorite episode is Original Skin, where you guys all switch bodies. Uh -huh. <laughs> what did you guys do to prepare for that? Like, how did you really oh. jump into that? We both wore, he wore Lena's underwear and I wore Ksenia's and he had the much easier gag because Ksenia's tiny and he wouldn't hold the whole package so it was really uncomfortable. But I used it like a true actor would. <laughs> this set was a special. Discovering my own genitalia as a woman. Um, I didn't think it looked so big. You know, I thought, I, I, my life was like, it's that small. But you know, I was like, whoa. That's okay. <laughs> We're officially banned in Georgia. Uh, I'd be a fool and like, get, get up. <laughs> oh, no, it was amazing. Like, honestly. Go ahead, Casey. No, we're, no it's okay. We're, we're banned in Georgia. It's all right. It's our last appearance. It was an excellent exercise in actor professionality and preparedness as we helped each other embrace our own alter egos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Casey asked me how a girl would kiss. See, you should have asked me a question. <laughs> I could have I could have gave you a much better answer. <laughs> no, it was, it was, yeah, it was actually, um, what happened was, uh, I think we answered this yesterday at the panel. Yeah. Um, so, how long did you have? Seven, five, six, seven days type of thing? Six, six minutes. Six minutes. <laughs> anyway, so we had, a, it was a really short amount of time that we had to uh, prepare. And um, what we did and was we all got together. <laughs> Sorry, I'm hungry. I just heard a rumble. That's all I heard. He's hungry. <laughs> but, um... I'm channeling uh, Zoe Palmer right now. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Uh, so we all got together in a, in, in a room and um, we just kind of helped each other. So, for instance, Lena uh, is the actress's name. who's Kiara. Uh, I would just... Who's amazing. Who's really amazing. Um, she would just kind of watch my idiosyncrasies and whatnot and um, vice versa. And, these guys all did the same thing, or Chris did, and um, that's... You know, yes, I wasn't in the fucking episode, I get it. It's, it's, it's too Pause much. Pause my language on the Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't enough meat for someone from Lambda. It wasn't enough meat. So, um, but that's all we did. I mean, we just kind of helped each other through it, and uh, we had a really short amount of time to, to, to make it happen. And uh, once again, I have to thank Chris for giving me a heads up of what was coming, you know, for that episode because, you know, he knows everything. He does know everything. He, he basically everything. tells you exactly what you're going to do on whatever season we're on. He totally. comes up and goes, oh yeah, I've read uh, the script and you're going to be... Uh... Yeah, it's like, what? What? <laughs> Who is this guy? so glad they interpret me that way because really <laughs> I don't know anything, but I'm glad I well, project yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. well, I was going to say, and, and Paul, since you weren't in that episode, but, you, well, we did not... And yes, it's everybody's favorite episode, I get it. No, no, that's not what I was going to say, but it, it, it was amusing, you must admit. It was probably one of the funnier episodes, am I right? Yeah. Yes. And the, the thing is, is that you kind of get to make people do whatever you want all the time. Yeah. I mean, your character does. Maybe you do too, I don't know. But in any case, <laughs> so for you, it would have been an interesting thing to maybe not be able to do that, I mean, for, for Vex, and oh. to have somebody else controlling. And I asked you this yesterday, but who would you, if some of these people may not have heard, who would you have chosen to do the body switch with if you had been in the episode? Who do you think it would have been the most challenging or the most fun to do that with? Yes, this yesterday, you said Kenzie, and it was already mine. So. Yes, I, I know, but yes. It would have been fun if Vex had done Dyson. <laughs> that would have been funny. Would Those two would have been funny. That would have been funny. Actually, you know what? I think I would Original have liked, skin too. I would have liked yeah, to see you play Trick. Because of the dialogue he has. He oh, has yeah. like the ridiculous gibberish words. 
and uh, I don't think you could have pulled that off. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just British. <laughs> I could pull anything off. Exactly my point. <laughs> Alright, really show us a North American accent, smart guy. Come on. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry about my voice, I was kind of screaming at a lot of concerts last night, so I sound kind of not like normal. I'm a storyteller. Oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. That's what she was doing last night. Not true at all. Stop making me laugh, I can't talk when I'm laughing. I'm a storyteller, and I'm really well aware of how difficult it is to convey a certain emotional context using just words on the paper. So there's, there's the actors, there's the director, and the scriptwriter who all have, I assume, slightly different perspectives on what kind of emotional content a given line or a given scene is going to have. How do you work all those perspectives together as an actor? How do, you, how do you find out what the writers want you to do? The director obviously tells you, but how do you head on that together? I'm going to hand this off to the only really well-trained Lambda actor here. <laughs> Paul, how do you take direction and act? <laughs> they just let me do what the hell I want. <laughs> Actually, no, uh, that is an awesome question. It's a really great question, and um, uh, you, there's a lot of negotiation that goes on sometimes in terms of. Well, it's, it's you, I mean, you would know more because you have the character arcs and stuff. I mean, I, I'm definitely getting a bit more into that now in season Did four. Did you hear that? A Lambda guy just said, I would know more. <laughs> Forever in history. I give him more. He's that. actually pretty good at this. Should I read that down? <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's really tough. Because as the character, you kind of, you know where you're at and you sort of also know where it would be interesting to go and be challenged in that character and uh, what, what would be an interesting journey and you, sometimes it, you have to try and you want to let the writers know that that these would be really interesting areas for this character to be challenged in but it's it's tough i mean those writers uh, right in a season of 13 episodes with all the different arcs and everything that they're trying to do and what the network want and what this bond everything it's so difficult to do it's a huge balance it's a huge bounce act and if you get you're lucky as an actor if they will take maybe one or two of your ideas um, and it's very very nice and validating when they do and they fit it in and I think we've got to a point where we're kind of there a little this season where they've listened to, uh, to the actors listened to where we are as the actors and the characters and um, they've listened a bit but and then they've written amazing stuff and elaborated on what we've suggested and that sort of stuff and but it's a huge balance in it and things always change uh, I mean we we might have the script and we study and we do our thing and then we get on set and sometimes it doesn't work yeah and sometimes things have to change right on the spot and writers come in and they're like oh you know what I messed up I don't like this blah 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 and they change something and um, so that keeps us incredibly on our toes and um, and sometimes they don't they might not agree with what we're doing you know it's 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 a little bit of give and take and it's really tough and you know being on a set there's a lot of assholes. And what I mean by that is, Everyone what I mean by that is, no, no, what I mean by that is, there are a lot of opinions, right? So everyone, you know, you, you guys have heard that, opinions are like assholes, everyone's got one. Okay, great. So that's what it's like on set. Everyone has an opinion and you kind of have to come together and, 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 and come to some sort of agreement and that's it, right? Directors, producers, writers, actors, gaffers, grips, like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it's, uh, you're so right, it's sometimes it's not until you put it on its feet and you're working it, and it's amazing to see some scenes that when you work it, and then they go, it doesn't work, and then all of a sudden the scene will take on a completely different direction to how it was written, sometimes just on its feet in the moment, because until you get up there and you're acting with someone, you never really know. It's just on the page, and uh, we have countless times on set where we're like, well, you do. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, I mean. Well, what's also nice about doing a serial show like this is that after four years, you become the authority on what you're doing. And so we have 
rotating directors who come in, guest directors, and they really just, they, they let the actor, they, they understand that the actor's been doing this for a long time, and they kind of let them bring what they want. Whereas a lot of times when you're doing a film, the director is very stringent as to what he wants and what he sees as the vision of the show. So um, that's kind of one of the blessings of doing like Lost World, especially since we're an independent production, we don't really answer to a large, we don't have a lot of network overseers. So we can work one-on-one -on -one with, direct, uh, with the director and the writer and um, really come up with ideas on the spot like these guys are talking about. And, um, just kind of craft stuff, and that's where you get to play. That's the fun. You get to work like collaboratively with people, the director and the other actors, and, and make something fresh every time. And, it's uh, it's also the beauty of, of being in the fourth season, yeah. and you know you know possibly going into a fifth, that you actually get to go on these journeys with the characters. It's really really rare for actors to go on those journeys because sometimes a lot of series, you know, they're one two seasons or three, and then it's cancelled, and you never really get to fully uh, experience that journey, but. We're pretty lucky, I would say. We are. I, I mean, even in terms of Vex, I mean, like, you know, not in it quite as much to begin with, but it couldn't be. You couldn't have a character like that in every episode. You have to earn it until you get to a point where you, you, the character is earned. Otherwise, Vex would have been too much and I would have been killed off straight away because he would just annoy the shit out of everyone. <laughs> But if you give him a journey and then you give reasons as to why and you build it, it's, it's, it's a great place to be now, I find him for, because now I'm at a place where it's really, really interesting for the character and he's challenged in amazing ways and I'm learning so much about him. Like um, how to wear a codpiece. That's, that's a hard choice. Like, can, can one of you guys wear a codpiece? Let's see a sport it. It's tough. It's great question, though. Great question. No spoilers. Yeah, hey, yeah. No spoilers. Mm, okay. Sheila? Hey, guys. Hello, um, Mary. <laughs> hey, Mary. I don't really have a question, but I do. We, the girls have brought you something, and Casey said he was hungry. Would it be okay if we give it to you now? Sorry, I didn't. I only said I was hungry because he grumbled in the background of my my answer, but I I didn't hear the rest of that. No, I I brought uh, me and the girls brought something, and it, it's a, it's basically a little get a little munchies. Oh, food. Yeah. <laughs> Security over here? Okay. I don't know if that's a good idea. Security might eat that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the meantime, yeah. let's throw another T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Play baseball, so let's see how far this goes. <laughs> next question. Yes, next question over here. Please. Obviously, not a supporter of Captain Canuck. <laughs> next question. I don't think I'm in that. We'll get you in it. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Oh. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I set that one up. Yeah, sir. It's not a panel unless you reach the subject of masturbation. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Come on, he set that one up. All right. <laughs> okay, this one's for Paul. I was going to ask him. Um, really? <laughs> yes, really. Whenever you are in Vex, you have all kinds of crazy costumes and all the leathers and stuff. Which one is your favorite and which one are you most like uncomfortable in? Uh, which is my favorite? Uh, I love the cop outfit because I got to take the piss out of him a lot in it. <laughs> and uh, to see Chris's face on set when I was walking around <laughs> when I first came in, was, it was quite priceless. Um, but actually, there's a costume that I wear in the first episode of season uh, of season four that is extraordinary. It will never be topped, and uh, don't show them. <laughs> I mean, because our costume department, I mean, Anne Dixon, who originally did the costumes in season one and two, and then Noreen, who's come on board, yeah. they are amazing. 
like the stuff that they get to do and sitting in a you know in a room trying to figure out what next to put Vex in is just so much fun. And there's something that they just bring stuff to you and you're like, where the hell did you get that? And how did you imagine that? And yeah, the first episode of season four, be prepared. I guess uh, shout out to Anita who's like I guess like our seamstress. Yeah, she's right. incredible. Yeah, she's she's amazing. She she makes everything fit. Yeah. That's great. All, all Dyson vests she makes by hand. She's, they're, they're all custom made by her. It's fantastic. Yeah, she works incredible with leather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does. That was like dirty. It she wasn't dirty. She does my leather jackets. She alters them. Or maybe we just thought it was dirty. Yeah. <laughs> People are looking at us like we're weird. <laughs> okay. I'm used to it. Come on, dude. What? What was it? Oh. He's, he's like, oh, did, 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 did you interrupt him? I wasn't sure if you got what? to talk. I just hold it down. My question okay, is... Okay, first of all, who are you right now? What's your costume? Uh, You're never getting invited back Dr. to Dragon Con. You know what I mean? From Venture Brothers. Sorry. Say again. Dr. Orpheus from the Venture Brothers. Ah, all right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so my question is for Casey. Yes. Um, Hale would seem to be missing in some of the key storylines, some of the epi specific episodes from last season. Was that just specifically, was he supposed to be like in the background doing ashy stuff, or was there any, any kind of issue of availability with you as an actor? I love, I love how you phrase that, ashy stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, uh, to be honest, you know, it was a scheduling issue. I was doing another show at the same time. And um, which was like a totally on the opposite side of Lost Girl, um, and uh, that's what it came down to. You know, it just came down to scheduling. It was it was, it was really tough, and um, you know, we uh, we worked on that this year. So there will be more hell. Okay, over here. I know we touched on this kind of yesterday with the light and dark question, but I was wondering if you guys could pick any Fae other than your current character, what would you pick and why? To be, you mean? What would they like to be? Yeah, yeah to be. I would like to be a type of Fae that could change his molecular chemistry into solid organic steel and touch steel and manipulate it at a atomic level. So if Isn't I grabbed like, a railway train, I could like suck all of the metal into my body and become humongous and like drip metal out of my hands that I've sucked into my body and made it make it atomically sharp samurai swords that function like lightsabers. And when I got into fight, man, I'd just be like a whirlwind of atomically sharp death. And I would be immortal because I would be completely made out of steel. And there would be a sequel where I would fall off of a boat and sink to the bottom of the ocean. And a thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand years later, I would get it on Earth. And they would put me up in this town because I was like this frozen statue, but I was still immortal. And a lightning bolt would hit me. And I would come back awake. Paul Amos would be cast in the part. I don't know why he's walking away from this. This is like the role of a lifetime. Get back here. I need a real Lambda actor. God damn it. Yeah, that's my dream. Laugh if you will. Always oh, chasing us. Yeah, he's there. Uh, we hope, we hope, we hope. Offering him a dream part of a lifetime, but no. no I would like to be Dyson. <laughs> that's, that, uh... Who? <laughs> Oh shit. Uh, can I retract that? I'm gonna be someone else. Let me see. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. He's gotta do it. He's gonna do it today. Just show us the belly for crying out loud. Just stand up. Give us a little bit. I showed my belly. Oh, it's coming. Yeah, oh. put him on the spot. Now he's uncomfortable. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> wow, all of a 
same time. That's incredible. Tease! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what about you, Paul? What kind of fae would you like to be? If you could follow his answer. <laughs> anything I say will pale in comparison. But you could say anything that couldn't be destroyed by a whole I don't thing. watch the show, really. I don't have cable. <laughs> I can't afford it. I've only done nine episodes. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best fan ever, so like, why would you want to be anything else? That's true. Yeah, I mean, okay. you don't want it. Everyone wants to be the best man. No, that is a good character. It's a really good character. It's the best man. Next question. Hey guys, um, thanks for the hug earlier when I took a photo with you. That made my day. Nice. Oh, um, very yeah. well. Thanks for waking uh, us up with a big hug. <laughs> um, my question is, um, you guys have really good scenes with Kenzie, and they're actually all my favorite scenes. Um, what is your favorite Kenzie scene with your character? Oh, wow. We all have great ones with that. Because Sandy Soul is an incredible actress to work with. Like, and a human being. Yeah, she's nice. We love her. Yeah, she's yeah. the easiest person, I would say, to work with. And, uh, well, besides <laughs> each other. Besides each other. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. She's actually, it's actually, I am an asshole. You find it easy to work with her? I do. Dude, she's always like, she's, this is Ksenia when I work with Ksenia, okay? Stand up. <laughs> so we're doing a scene, and we're in the middle of a scene, right? I'm not doing that. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> She looks amazing all the time. Yeah. What would be? I don't know. I, well, I, the makeup scene I had with her was awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, that was a, it was a really beautiful, sweet scene, and uh, that scene I think was responsible for opening up a completely different avenue for Vex. And working with her for the first time properly, um, really, you know, whether those two characters got to know each other was a was a real joy. Despite the fact that it pissed down with rain all the way through that, and I had to ADR the whole scene. ADR which, is an additional dialogue recording. It's when yeah, the sound gets screwed up, so you have to replace your voice. And it, it was, it's a real pity, scene. because that scene it is, it is the most beautiful, sweet scene. It was actually quite long in terms of, it was like three pages. And um, this thunderstorm came down, and... Uh, you know, as an actor, when you're there and you're filming in the studio and then the storm comes down, you're like, can we wait? And then you're behind and they go, we got to go. And then you've got to go into an ADR booth and then try and recreate that in a booth on your own is really, really difficult. But I think I did it because I'm a Lambda trained actor. <laughs> Last time, a couple really good ones. I mean, there was the foot soup episode where you know, she was dying, and I think that was the really the, the sort of seminal scenes for the Kesenia, no, Kenzie and Dyson relationship. And then we also had some fun stuff in season three, I believe, where she turned into the Kitsune. Oh yeah. And that yeah, that was that was really fun to watch her play two like her own self twice over. It was brilliant. And in season four, we have some really kick-ass stuff that you're gonna love. And uh, I can't tell you any more about it besides that it's awesome and the best yet. The first episode of season four is it's amazing. off the fucking charts. It's, it's so good we can't tell you anything about it. <laughs> it's it's exactly. It's huge. Everything you know about Law School, turn it on its head in that first episode. Oh, now talk about a teaser, that's um, Okay, over here. Um, Hi. Oh, no, sorry, I thought you meant I was looking down. Go ahead, I don't need to answer this. No, 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 no. No, no, it's okay. No, we move on. Let's move on. Oh, I, didn't mean I actually really don't know. Uh, I really don't know. I would say I, I like the first episode that we did because that was kind of... Uh, that was the introduction to Helen Kenzie. That was at the pool table where we were kind of making fun of each other about being the sidekick, or I was more, as Paul would say, taking the piss out of uh, her about being the sidekick. Um, that, and I enjoyed, uh, I think, the scene where the girl threw up on me. 
<laughs> that was a great episode all around. Just uh, I mean, every dude likes that. Is that to be barfed up? Yeah, it was it was fun because you know you give her I gave her a job to do type of thing, or she gave I was given a job to do and she screwed it up and she has these great expressions and she's awesome. All right, next question. <laughs> Hi, my question is actually for Paul, because everyone else seems to kind of have like a love interest going on. So if your character could have one, who would you like it to be? Like, serious love interest. Don't do it. <laughs> Clearly Dyson. <laughs> Don't do it. You know you all want to say that. <laughs> it's just because he knows Dyson has practiced licking his own balls. <laughs> There's a reciprocal factor there. Yeah, there's some quality licking there. Is it to canines? I know, maybe we'll find out no, someone else. Like, would it be Bex will get a love interest? Would it be someone who's part of it right now, or would it be like a totally new character? Uh, a love interest. Uh, the love interest? Yeah, uh, I'm not allowed to. Come on, man. Give us something! <laughs> I just did, I said that. Okay, apparently that's his answer. And I'm not like to, to say anything else. <laughs> anything else. Uh, on that love okay. interest subject. Over here we have what looks like Dr. Lewis. Uh, Hello! Hi guys! Hey Zoe, how are you? Oh, you made it! I made it! Great! It was a fly, it just took the last one out. <laughs> um, my question is, there's a lot of aspects of the show that I really love watching it that make that are Canadian. For instance, the use of um, French culture, uh, especially when Bo is all mad and she's that whole scene with the I'm gonna count to hundred in French. It would be so much different if it was written American. That would probably be Spanish. Um, what aspects of the it would probably would. Um, what aspects of the show that make it what it are um, do you really like out of like it being a Canadian show? Um, I, I think, I mean, I touched on it earlier, and it's that we're kind of an independent production. I mean, Jay Firestone is our exec, and we answer to Showcase, and uh, we're, we're aired by Sci Fi. But they don't have any, they, they have script, they have absolute input, but, you know, in a lot of the big network shows, you can't change the lines. The, the script has gone through 12 different checks, you know, 12 different executives in New York, and when you're trying to film in Toronto, they're like, no, you can't even, you can't change an and for a but or anything like that. But on Law School, because we are independent and small, we can actually talk to the writer or the executive producer or the, you know, and just say, hey, let's, why don't we try this? And, and that freedom of creativity and uh, collaboration is, I think, the greatest gift that. I have, or that I feel on. Yeah, they're usually available, aren't they? Totally. Because they're so close, they can actually come down to set. So, um, and usually they'll see what's happening, and they can, you know, give a plus, or you give a yay or an a to the changes. But on other productions, you're phoning New York, they don't see it, or you're phoning LA, and it's so hard to get that yay. Usually they just go no, as it's written, and you do it, whether it works or not. Casey okay, so has something to say. No, sorry, sorry. It's just static, static. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what I just noticed? I don't. <laughs> We're on a screen. We are. <laughs> Dude, someone's got to take a picture of that. <laughs> for some reason, he had to squeeze my boob for that. <laughs> Right on the camera. Moment. What did KC do last night? <laughs> I thought he went to bed. I got rest. <laughs> All right. So All right, where next we question. We're over here. Another question. Hi, this is for Chris. Um, I'm actually competing for Team USA for Battle of Nations overseas, and I know that you're a past Pan American, Pan Pacific champion, and I'm just wondering if you, and obviously still in fabulous shape. I just wanted yes, to know yes. if you, <laughs> if you incorporate any of your past training into your current workouts. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Dude has the like, best shoulders ever. <laughs> Seriously. He's got the... Yeah, he's got the best shoulders. Alright, I said you have a 24 pack of abs. he's got the best shoulders, shoulders ever. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Everything that I learn, I, it's, it's just always an ongoing sort of process. It's like the, the swimming and, and the pentathlon sports led 
that's how I got into acting. And then, um, you know, it was like Tai Chi, different sort of martial arts. And, it, and for Dyson, it became a lot about energy work, you know, because he's a supernatural character. How do you create this energy that is more than human, more than just me sitting there on a Sunday morning going, hey, how's it going, guys? You know? And um, all those things sort of played into it. And, uh, and I think for everyone who's you know, in all of our endeavors, it's always an ongoing sort of learning process. So I look forward to what I'm going to learn next. But... That was a really tired Sunday morning answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that great question. I hope I answered it. Over here. Uh, my question is for all three of y'all. What is your favorite part of being your character? And if you could be someone else, who would you have picked to do? What's the favorite part of us being ourselves? <laughs> and who else would we have picked if we could have choose? Gotcha. Mm. Am I just going to talk it on my phone? Hello, everybody. Good morning. Okay, we need some energy. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Sunday. Who's awake? Okay, thank God you guys are awake. Woo! All right. I was just going into like sermon tone there. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, Paul Amos, take it away. What's the best part of me? Uh, what, what do I like? Here we are again. Uh, I like, I, I really love, uh, I'm getting too close to this thing. I love the sound of my own voice, I think. Um, I, uh, the best, I is humor. I just, because uh, it's actually quite close to my own. Um, I'm a bit of a sadist in real life. I do take pleasure out of seeing people in pain. Hello. Um, in various situations. Um, and that, uh, that is an, uh, that's an affinity that I have with the character, is the humor. Um, it's very, very close to who I am. It's, it's interesting with these characters, how much they take out of you and how much they, they, there's they a give back. agreement sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's hard to leave them alone. And um, Vex is amazing, but you don't really want to take him home. <laughs> and I find that hard sometimes. Uh, you know, you have to really decompress. Because you get, you're in leather, you're in this costume, you're taking the piss out of everyone, you think you're... And then you walk off set, and you're really not that person. And you go back home, and your wife is like, Come on, Paul, you need to chill out. You are not Vex. <laughs> and who would you like to be? Who would I like to be? Um, I think for the humor wise, probably Kenzie, because she's so funny. Um, and again, that's an affinity that I have of, you know, with that character in terms of the humor. I love her humor. She's so quick witted and funny. I wish I was that quick witted, but I'm not. I'm a slow Welsh guy. Uh, I, think, I think for me, it was the months of practicing yoga to be able to link my own genitalia. Really <laughs> get into the canine state of mind. I would also scooch, which feels really good on shag carpet. I'm so sorry. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we've this done three straight answers in a row. I, I, can we do three serious answers in a row? I know some of you are wishing you went to church instead. I, I was, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't go to Lambda, obviously. <laughs> It's been great. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay, so who would you like to He's relieved himself again. Who would you like to uh, We're doing good. We know we're doing well when Paul Amos leaves the panel twice. Um, yeah, no, for me, it's like the physicality. It's like the question earlier, you know? Be <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. And on to you, Casey. Oh, who would you like to play? There's two, it's a two-part question. What about you, Casey? Who would you like to play? Well, no one else can scooch, and once you've scooched on Shag Carpet, you don't ever want to go back. So, Dyson, copy that. Just try it someday. Just scooch on your grandmother's carpet on a scotch. You won't be offended. Copy that. Try to be you a little weird. Um, you know what I, what I, see, no one's Security, yeah, there, there's a half naked there. man over right there. He's British. <laughs> get him out of here. You get out of here. Please 
sir, can I have some more? Um, I, uh, you Thank you. <laughs> He's been nothing but a disruption. Because I'm on a boat back where he belongs. It's a good thing he answered first. And see that. <laughs> exactly. No professionally trained actors on this show. <laughs> if you can't scoot, you don't belong. <laughs> this is going Four to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> oh, uh, well, you know. I'm just going to throw the t shirt. <laughs> Do it, Rich. Do the but, um, With Hale, you know what? I love how neutral he is. I, I've actually learned a lot from Hale. Um, I enjoy that. He's kind of trying to be helpful to everyone, and I think that's an important factor. Um, I think, you know, I'm going <laughs> to. Hold on. I think as human beings, it's an important factor. <laughs> To just try to help each other. Just try to love me too. To just He's getting very emotional. Just try to be nice to everyone. And just, 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 just be quiet. How would Paul do it if he was if, if he was up here? Just yeah. now. Hi. I, is this, this is for both of you. Um, where did you train? They, they like, they like, they like, they, 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 they like go to drama school or something. No. Wait, actually, what did you do to become such awesome actors? Actually, sir, I um, the technique I was trained in was the Meisner technique. So bring a bitch. I, I watched Magnum PI. <laughs> So I could really relate with the Doberman Pinscher. <laughs> and Scooch. That, that's all your goal. Goal. Scooch. I love you guys. I'm sorry, that. just one, one question. That's, a, that's all you were allowed. Just one question. Thanks. Take your shirt off. Take your shirt off. Thank you, Nancy.